In this video I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to help you when studying psychology. We'll be looking at ChatGPT as a research tool, as a tool for ideas how to structure your text, and as a text producing tool. And I will tell you why ChatGPT to produce academic texts is quite dangerous. What I won't be addressing is ChatGPT for helping you with your statistics about that topic, how ChatGPT can help you for instance with writing R code or things like that. I've made a separate video, you'll find the link in the description. What is ChatGPT? It's an AI tool based on a large language model. That is, all kinds of text were inputted into ChatGPT, books, journal articles, websites, and a neural network was trained to react on text inputs. You put in your query down here, click on that button, and then after a couple of seconds the text output will begin. Let's start with research. Let's look at some prompts I use when I research a new topic. Here as an example I use self-determination theory, one of the leading theories about human motivation. And the first prompt I use is what is, in this case what is self-determination theory. And here I get a short but I think good explanation about that theory. As a follow-up I like to use what are key concepts of. And then I get a list of key terms of this theory. That is helpful for two reasons. One, so when I'm reading introductory papers, primarily I want to get additional information about those 10 concepts. The second reason why such a list is helpful, you can use it to some extent as a checklist. When later on you're writing down your thoughts about self-determination theory, you know that those are key terms you should address and you should probably use in your paper. When it comes to research the literature, a prompt I like is what are good introductory papers about? And then you get a list. With the results you have to be careful. Some of those results are real. Some of those results can be inventions of ChatGPT. So it is possible, and I've seen it, that ChatGPT just combines reference information from several sources into one new reference for a source that doesn't exist. So of course you still have to research those sources, but I think nevertheless, as a starting point, it is helpful. Of course, you could ask as well, what are good book chapters about self-determination theory? Because I think book chapters are often more easily to understand than a journal article when you're starting with a new theory. When you have identified some sources you may want to read, journal articles, book chapters, then before starting to read them, it may be helpful to get a short summary, for instance with what are the key takeaways from the journal article and then the journal article. Of course you have to check whether the summary that ChatGPT has written is correct, so you still have to read the journal article or the book chapter, but it's easier reading a source if you already know the main points you can expect from that source. For empirical research you need scales or other measurement instruments. For that I like the question, what are measurement instruments based on? And here I get seven measurement instruments. Some of the information is not 100% accurate, but I really did find seven instruments by using those seven results and googling them. And of course the next step would be to look up those different instruments. So to sum up this point, I think ChatGPT can make your initial research about a new topic much faster. The next use of ChatGPT is a little bit problematic, so you have to be careful with that. It's for helping you find a structure for the things you're writing. For instance, write a structure for an essay about self-determination theory. And you get a beautiful looking structure. One problem could be that ChatGPT has used all kinds of text snippets to put together this structure. So you have a certain risk of plagiarism if you use this. I wouldn't use this exactly as it is output. You can use it as a rough draft, but you shouldn't use it exactly like this if you structure your essay or your paper. The same for a presentation. Write an outline for a 10 slide presentation about. Then you get ideas for a 10 slide presentation. Whether you are allowed to do this, well, that probably depends on the rules of your university. Because strictly speaking, this structure isn't your idea anymore. Sometimes even small changes in the way you write your prompt can make a difference. So it can be helpful to ask for the same thing in slightly different terms, because Sometimes you get slightly different results with additional information. Here I have written produce a presentation about self-determination theory with 10 slides. I get a different answer. 
First, the program tells me that it can produce a complete presentation, but then the 10 points are quite similar to the ones I've got earlier, but I get additional information here. For instance, here, by promoting autonomy supportive environments. That information wasn't in the first 10, ten slides. The third theoretically possible use for ChatGPT would be in the production of text. For instance, by using a prompt, write a 10 sentence essay about self determination theory or improve this text, or shorten this text. For academic writing, I would not use things like that, because it's quite dangerous. ChatGPT is based on a large set of texts, and you run the risk that ChatGPT gives you a text where there are sentences taken from other sources, without you knowing that. So in a way, ChatGPT is more or less, by definition, a plagiarism software. And it's quite possible that if your university uses plagiarism checking software, that they will detect sentences that you or JetGPT has simply copied from other sources without the correct source information. So that is extremely risky. And for that reason, I wouldn't use it as a text producing tool for academic writing. For other writing, it's great. For instance, if you want to write an email or maybe even write something in a foreign language, then especially this improve this text is a great tool. But for academic writing, it's much too risky. Furthermore, there are developments of software that can detect whether a text was written by a human being or by a program like ChatGPT. I've put a link to an article about that topic in the description of this video. So that's the second reason. You run the risk that the, your university will be able to detect that you have used ChatGPT to write your text. So I think ChatGPT for you doing research is great. For getting ideas about structure is at least, I think, a gray area as long as you don't just copy the results but use the results more or less as inspiration for your own structure. But using ChatGPT to generate text for academic writing, for papers, for thesis, for dissertations, you shouldn't do that. And if you want to use ChatGPT to help you with your statistical programming, for instance, to generate R code, for that I recommend watching my video about ChatGPT and statistics. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.